I think when you think about it, the answer sounds almost ridiculously simple, yet it's a huge challenge. It's actually achieving durable, lasting, efficient PV isolation. And this means you want to do it safe, you want to do it reasonably fast, you want to do it repetitively, I mean highly reproducibly, and you want to avoid, of course, seeing patients come back with atrial fibrillation with their veins not isolated because it means you failed at what you set out to do. Well, there's a few thoughts about how can we improve this? How can we improve our outcomes? One is to work from what we have, which is point-by-point point RF ablation, and improve that and, for example, enhance the technology. For example, incorporate temperature sensors in the irrigated tip catheter to improve the lesion formation. The other approach, of course, is to forget a bit about point-by-point point RF lesion formation and go into single-shot approaches. And obviously, we've had the cryo balloon for quite some time quite some time now and many other companies and, and technologies are emerging hoping to, to deliver a solution exactly to provide efficient PV isolation. Well, for years if we have a patient that we've treated for AFib if he or she comes back with recurrence, it's always a bit of a question, did the treatment fail, meaning did we not succeed in providing durable PV isolation, or is perhaps the patient not the ideal candidate for the treatment that we chose? And I think with the enhancements or the evolutions that we've seen over the past few years, we're going to be able to solve at least the first part of the question, which is, did we fail at performing PV isolation? Well, not so much. These days, we're seeing much more patients come back to the lab with recurrent AFib with all veins isolated, which is a whole new problem, of course, which you could say is a new nightmare for the treatment uh, of, of the AFib, but at least we're succeeding in the original goal of isolating the veins. And I do hope and I do firmly believe that this will give us great new insights in which patients to optimally select for which treatment.